So I'm going to be in a scripture, Luke 10, 38 through 42. It's going to be on the screen as I read it. And I love this scripture in verse 38. It says, now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, don't, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. Man, I, like when Jesus says, Ryan, Ryan, I know that I need to change something. He said, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is ne necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. The title of my message today is The Religion Trap the religion trap. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We're so excited for what you're going to do today. Thank you that it's not with wise and persuasive words, but by the demonstration of your spirit's power. So Lord, I just pray that you speak clearly today. I pray that whatever I say, Lord, that you will begin to encourage and equip this young generation. I pray that you do what only you can do in this time. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Come on, you can have your seats. Um, I had a dog, uh, you know, a few months ago, and her name was Coda, and uh, Coda was a great dog. I love Coda. She was like a 50-pound dog. Uh, she shedded everywhere, you know, but she, she cuddled with me. I love cuddling with, my, with, with Coda. You know, she, who, who likes dogs in this place? Anyone likes, yeah, dogs? If you don't like dogs, uh, I, I question you. You know, that's it's a little weird. Who likes cats in this place? Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and uh, head out to, uh, to, to somewhere else. No, I'm kidding. But uh, uh, I love dogs. Dogs are amazing, and uh, I like all types of dogs. I love chihuahuas. I love uh poodles, you know? I, I, I love all types of dogs. What other type of dogs are there? Beagles, right? I had a beagle one time. Uh, my favorite type of dog is a pug uh, because I like how ugly they look. It's just like, they're so ugly, but so cute, you know? Like, come on, someone take that word today. Like, you might be ugly, but but you're also cute, you know what I'm saying? And, and But I love dogs, and uh, my, my dog, you know, she was a, um, she was a lab, and I, I loved her. Um, she wasn't the best dog out of her crate. She would kind of tear up some stuff. She would sometimes, she liked to go pee on her bed sometimes. It was kind of rough. Um, she, would, she would ruin different things if we left her out of the crate. So we decided to lock her in, to trap her in the crate anytime we were out of the house. I, like, I couldn't trust her. I was like, man, like, like you're going to have to stay in your crate so you don't destroy my apartment. And so we would leave her in her crate all the time, and she hated that crate. Like, she just wanted to be out of it. She, she would bark whenever we were gone. She would whine and cry. She hated that crate. She just wanted to be out of it. And every day, though, we didn't care. Like, we don't care what she thought. It's my house. You're not destroying my house. It's my house. You're in the crate whether you like it or not. So we would put her in the crate, and we would keep her there. And one day, um, we, we put her in the crate, but we only locked the top lock of the crate, okay? We just locked it, and it was normal. We walked away, we went back to work, we went back to wherever we were, hanging out with friends, and we came back uh, to our house, and we locked the crate when we left, but when we got home, she was out of the crate. And I was like, wait a minute, what type of witchcraft is going on here? Like, this is crazy right now. And I walked in and I discovered, I, we saw on the crate uh, that there was hair all around it and she squeezed through the little crack and she made it possible to squeeze out of this crate. And I was like, what in the world? This dog is like, the, 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 this dog is so smart. I was so confused and she, she got out of the crate crate. She got out of it. She, she was trapped, but she ended up getting out of it. And you know, sometimes as Christians, uh, we are, we're trapped. The enemy, his main goal uh, in our Christian life is to trap 
trap us. He, he wants to put us in a crate. He wants to put us in a jail. He wants to put us in bondage and keep us trapped in. He, he doesn't want us to walk this world freely with boldness and faith. What he wants us to do is he wants us to suffer and he wants us to be miserable. He wants us to be locked up and trapped for our entire lives. He constantly wants to do it. And, and there were so many times in my life where the enemy had victory over me in this. He, he locked me up. He trapped me. And, and I wish, I hope that we have a generation that's kind of like my dog, that, that no matter what, what is uh, trapping my dog, Coda, no matter what is locking her up, she didn't, she didn't grow comfortable in her suffering. She, didn't, she wasn't satisfied with being locked up, but she had relentless. She had a fight. And as soon as there was a way out of the trap that she was in, she fought through it and got freedom from the crate that she was in. And I believe that there's a generation in this place today that isn't satisfied with being broken, with being trapped, with being locked up, but we have a generation that is willing to fight out of the crate that the enemy has trapped us in. And I know I'm preaching a little early. It's like, man, it's cold outside. I can't handle this right now. But, but I'm here to tell you that if you don't have a fight, you're going to stay trapped for the rest of your life. And, and, and no matter how good the preaching is, no matter how good the worship is, no matter how good the pastor is, if you don't individually learn how to fight for yourself, as soon as you leave a church, as soon as you leave a building, as soon as you leave something that is provided for you, you're going to walk back to the crate that the enemy has had you in for the, your entire life. But if you can learn to, to say no... I'm no longer satisfied with what the enemy has been doing in my life. I am no longer going to grow comfortable in this place. I am going to fight so that I can get freedom. And, and if you can do that, if you can learn to fight, if you can learn to, to be tenacious, if you can learn to be bold, you're going to get more freedom because of your fight. We love the power of Jesus, but he needs you to fight as well. And, and one way the enemy tries to trap us is through religion. The, the enemy wants us to, 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 to fall in this trap of religion. He just wants us to constantly be in this trap. And, and uh, in this story that we read in Luke 10, we meet uh, uh, two sisters, two women called Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha is awesome. Mary, she was sitting at the feet of Jesus. And I don't know about you. I, don't, I, I, I love Jesus, you know, but, but I also don't love feet. So this would be pretty intense for me to sit by some feet. But she was she was sitting at the feet of Jesus, relaxing, you know, hanging out, receiving from the word of the Lord. And we also meet Martha. Martha, uh, she was getting some stuff done. She was serving. Nothing would be done in this house if it wasn't for Martha. This is a lot like me and my wife's situation. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a little lazy when it comes to cleaning the house, and she normally gets stuff done, and she's like, boy, get your butt off off that couch. And I'm like, yes, ma'am. Uh, and, and so, but Martha, she, would, she got it done. Like, she did the dishes. She was preparing the food. If it wasn't for Martha, nothing would have been done around this house. Martha was a servant. Martha. Martha was getting the stuff done that needed to get done. And she was serving. She was doing what she was supposed to do. Martha was a servant. God has called Christians to serve. Did you know this? Did you, did, did you know that God has called Christians to serve? The way God moves on this earth is by Christians that serve. Okay, so I don't know if this is mind blowing to you or not, but but Christians aren't supposed to only to, to only come and receive and do all of that. No, Christians are called to serve. And let me prove it to you in Mark 10, 44 through 45. It says, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. That's even worse than a servant. You're like you're a slave to all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, come on, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So 
So Christians, we aren't, we aren't called just to, to be here and, and to go through life. No, Christians are called to serve. They're, they're called in many ways. And how, how can you serve? Like, what are areas that you can serve? They're serving, you can do it all types of ways. You can do it through your, your lifestyle, by just the way that you live. You can serve by holding a door at 1132 Youth. You can serve by leading worship at 1132 Youth. Come on, apply on uh, church1132.com uh, and slash applications. And uh, I, I actually don't know if that's an application. Uh, you can serve by leading worship. You can serve. What I'm doing right now is I'm serving God by preaching. You know the media team back there? They're serving God's house by leading media. You know, you can serve God by sharing the gospel with someone that's broken. That, that's serving God. You can serve God by, by the way that you live uh, with your skills and your talents, by going and being a doctor and providing, by giving, by being a blessing. There are all types of ways to serve. Serving isn't a picture perfect thing, but we are called to serve. If we're gonna see the kingdom of God move forward, does anyone wanna see the kingdom of God move forward? Does anyone wanna see a revival in the city of Allen and Prosper and Wiley? Like, like we want to see the kingdom of God move forward, but the only way that it's possible is through Christians that serve. So, so I want to encourage you, if you're only a Christian that receives but never serves, I want to encourage you to take a step and serve the house of God, to serve the kingdom of God, because it is through serving that we see the kingdom of God move forward. But here's, here's a thing. When serving becomes more about task, when we focus more about task than we focus about on relationship, serving becomes a religion. Come on, let, I, want, I want to say that again. I want to say it the way that I wrote it down. It, it, I, I wrote this down. It says, serving becomes religion when the task become more important than our relationship with God. So when we're, when we're about serving, we're, we're going places and we're doing things, we're holding doors. When serving becomes more about the task, more about the job, more about what I'm doing for God and, and how I look and what, serving now becomes a religion. It, it, it becomes now you're, you're trying to earn your way into the kingdom of God. You're trying to prove yourself to other people. We become so consumed with the task when we are more concerned with what we look like rather than our love for God, we are now in religion. When we are more concerned about doing the right thing than having the right heart, we are under the, 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 the umbrella of religion. When we are more concerned about being accepted by other people, we are under the umbrella of religion because we are making what we're doing more important than the God that we're serving. And, and, and I don't know if anyone's in here who does that to where you're in this life and you're, just, you're, you're going about your life, you're going about your day, and you are constantly making what you do more important about what the, the God that we serve, we are living, almost, we're, we're living in religion. And religion isn't, uh, it, religion is a trap. Did you know that? Religion is a trap. Religion is something that we, religion is you working for God's love instead of you receiving God's love. Re religion is a place to where you're, you, and, and here's the thing. Thank you for those claps. Uh, it's beautiful. It's awesome. But religion, sometimes we're, Christianity is a religion, right? But, but Christianity, sometimes if we make it only about religion, if we're like, hey, I'm a Christian, that's my religion, then we are, we are limiting our life as a Christian because religion was never supposed to be what defines us. Relationship is what defines Christians. And, and I wanna encourage you, if you're in this trap of religion, if you're constantly making what you do more important about the God that we serve, there is freedom available for you. The enemy is trying to trap you in the things that you are constantly trying to do to work and earn God's love, but God wants you you to be free from the religion, and he wants us to step into relationship. God has something more for us. And in Luke 10, 
we're going to learn how we can live in relationship instead of religion. And so this is what religion does. Religion causes us to be distracted. It causes us to be distracted. In Luke 10, 40a, uh, it says, Martha was distracted with much serving. She was distracted with much serving. So even though Jesus was in the next room over, she was distracted with much serving. Even though the person who can help her, who can set her free, who can encourage her, even though that the savior of the world, even though that the Messiah, the, the, the man Jesus who was about to die on the cross for our sins was in the room, her eyes were fixed on the things that she was supposed to do, the things that had to be done. She was distracted. How many times do we have missed opportunities with God because we're distracted? How many times are we in uh, an atmosphere to where we can encounter the presence of God, but in the back of our minds, we are thinking about something else that's more important than God because we're distracted by it? Do you know this? What we focus on the most is what we honor the most. That, oh, so, someone's going to help me tonight. Someone's going to help me. What we focus on the most is what we honor the most. And when we focus on... Uh, when we focus on all of these different things, when we focus on relationships, when we, when we focus on business, when we focus on education, when, when we focus on sports, and all of our attention is going to that, even though we're in the presence of God, we're thinking about all of the things in this life, we are now honoring those things more than God. Because our focus is on that. What do you focus on the most? What is your mind constantly consumed with? We are, as humans, distracted all the time, right? Like, like, I get distracted all the time. I'm sure you get distracted all the time. How many of us spend hours on TikTok a day, but we never focus on the word of God? Come on now. Come, so, come on now. I'm stepping on toes. Like, we're scrolling through the feed, but we're not scrolling through the scroll. You know what I'm saying? Like, like. Like we're watching dancing, we're watching skits, but, but we're not getting into the presence of God. Our focus is off. Uh, how many times do you wake up and you turn on Sports Center? you look at all of the things that are happening with Golden State, and, and your mind is constantly consumed with everything that is happening on ESPN? Your focus is on that, but we're not focused on our relationship with God. We are distracted. How many times, God, oh, I just want a man of God. Like, I want someone to take me out and make me feel nice. Like, ooh. No, no, like we, we want all of this. No, I think we need, a, a, we need a savior. You know, our, 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 our attention is on all of these things, but our focus is off. And there's times where all of a sudden in this life, we are making this life, we're, we're just trying to get through life, we're trying to, we're trying to earn, we're trying to, we're trying to make our lives uh, right, we don't want to feel certain ways and do certain things, and sometimes we can be so depressed and anxious that it's easier to focus on other things rather than actually, rather than you dealing with what you're dealing with internally. So let me, let me, uh, let me dissect this a little bit for you. So you go through a trauma and you're hurt, you're, you're in pain, someone took advantage of you, someone hurt you, and it is easier for you to look a certain way and act a certain way to distract yourself from the trauma and from the pain and from the trap that the enemy has tried to keep you in. So, so we go throughout this life, and, and instead of entering into a relationship with God, even though the Savior, the person who can set you free from the trauma, the person who can set you free from the bondage, we we are so focused on serving rather than the Savior. And I believe that there's people in this place today, as you focus on the wrong things, you will stay trapped in this trap of religion. But God has something for you. We are trapped in religion. Religion will cause us to be distracted. And two, religion will cause us to be alone. 
will cause us to be alone. It says in verse 40, and he went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Has left me to serve alone. Most religious people don't step into the presence of God because they think they can earn the love of God by everything that they're doing. So they're over here serving, they're over here looking right, they're holding the doors, they're here every Wednesday night, they're leading on the worship team, they're, 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 they're a, a first year college student, I, I'm doing everything that I, wanted, that, I, that I think I can do and I am trying to earn the love of God. And, and we do this outwardly, we can look Christians can look so good, religious people can look so good outwardly, but internally they're broken, they're hurting, and they're ashamed. And throughout this life, we want to serve God and and really try to earn God's love. Religious people will constantly try to earn God's love. You know, people walk away from God because they feel like they didn't earn God's love. They, they feel like they disappointed God. I made too many mistakes, so I don't even deserve to be in the presence of God. I've sinned too much. If I walk into church, I'm going to be struck by lightning. If I, if I try to get into community, people are going to be ashamed of me because of everything that I've done. We will go through these mindsets in our mind because of religion. I want to earn your love, God. I, I, I want to do all these right things, but, but because we fail, because we made mistakes, because we could earn it through our own strength, it is easier for us to walk away and be somewhere else and do something else because we feel like we've disappointed God. Have you ever been there before where you've made so many mistakes, you, you're ashamed of yourself and you feel like God is ashamed of you too? Have you ever created these mindsets in your mind that that you can never be loved by God, that you can never be used by God, that you can never lead uh, in the presence of God? Have you ever created these excuses? Like like whenever I'm talking about uh, uh, leading and serving and moving the kingdom of God forward, whenever I'm talking about this, you're like, oh, that's not for me because I've messed up too much. Uh, uh, that's not for me. I, I'm just going to stay over here alone and, and let the Christians be uh, do whatever they're doing. I, I'm just going to stay alone. I'm going to stay by myself because I've made m- too many mistakes. I, I, it's easier for me to serve alone than it is for me to step in the presence of God. And, and I believe that there's a lot of Christians who, and, and religious people who do this. But did you know you can't earn the love of God? You cannot earn the love of God. Watch what it says in Romans 3, 23, 24. It says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. We've all fallen. We've all sinned. We've all made mistakes. None None of us can earn it. None of us can deserve it. None of us can work our way into salvation. None of us can work our way in into a better place with God. It is through his grace. It is through his freedom. I thought more people would be more excited about that with me. Like, like, like I thought I was at 1132 youth. We are called by God. We are saved by God. We are set free by God. And there are too many Christians that are trying to earn God's love when we could just receive God's love. Too many Christians are are in this place trying to do certain things and look certain ways and and trying to earn God's love. Earn God's love. (laughs) Come on now. I'm a man. I'm 27. (laughs) Earn God's love. When you can just receive it. You can't earn it. You can't work your way into it. You can only receive it. God wants relationship with us. And we find relationship will come. Relationship will cause us to draw close. Relationship. When we have relationship with God, when when we're not trying to earn it anymore, when we're not trying to work our way into it, what relationship will do is it will cause us to draw close 
close. In Luke 10, 39a, it says, she had a sister called Mary who sat at the feet of Jesus. Mary had relationship with Jesus. She, she, she drew close to Jesus. There, whenever we're trying to earn the love of God, we draw far from Jesus. But whenever we're in relationship with Jesus, we draw close. In James 4, 8, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Too many times we're serving and waiting and working, waiting for God to come to us. But here's good news. Jesus already came to us. Jesus already paid the price. Jesus already did what he had to do. He has opened the veil. He has made, uh, he has given us instant access to the presence of God. He has done everything that he's needed. Now, what is up to us is for us to draw near to him and he will draw near to us. And we're over here waiting for God to come and come with an audible voice, Tavon, I have come to, to deliver you from the enemies that have captivated you. No, no, we're waiting for this supernatural moment in our brokenness, but sometimes it takes a little bit of grit, a, a little bit of fight of even though I'm in pain, even though I'm in doubt, even though I'm in fear, even though I'm in chains, I'm gonna draw near to God. When we have actual relationship with God, it is easier to draw near to him. It is when we have to try to fight our way. No, God wants us to draw near because he wants to draw near to us. And and I believe that as we draw near tonight, I'm going to give us an opportunity in a few moments. I'm going to open up these altars and you might be far from God. You you might have been trapped in this religion. You, You might have been trapped in these mindsets, but tonight you have an opportunity to draw near to God. You have the opportunity to do something great in the presence of God, which is to be at his feet. Mary was at his feet. She drew near to God. And I'm gonna ask the keys to come forward. Relationship will cause us to draw close. And secondly, it'll cause us to hear truth. It'll it'll cause us to hear truth. In Luke 10, 39b, it says, "And, uh, and she listened to his teaching. She listened to his teaching. They heard the truth. She heard the truth as Jesus was teaching. She heard something that was greater than anything that she was hearing before. The truth of God shall set us free. The the truth of God. It's not the truth of the world. It's not the truth of your parents. It's not the truth of your education. It's not the truth of your degree. It's not the truth of your your success. It's not the truth of your relationship, your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Like, like in her relationship, she heard truth, and and, and it is the it is the truth that that shall set us free. And and what we need more than anything is we need to hear the truth of God more, more than anything. More more than hearing more of the news, more of the government, more of politics, more more than entertainment, more than rap, more than all of that stuff. What we need to hear is the truth of God. And when we hear the truth of God, when, when we hear whom the Son sets free is free indeed, that shifts something in our, in our hearts. When, when we hear that he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the same yesterday, today, and forever, this is what shifts something in our lives. It, it's not... It's not self-talk, it's not what it's not drugs, it's not stuff that people are mustering up. No, it is a truth of God. And when we're in relationship, we're actually able to hear the truth from God Himself. You can't just hear the truth of God from me. You can't just hear the truth of God from your leaders. You have to learn to have truth of God whenever you're by yourself. Oh, imagine what will happen in this city once we start having Christians who have actual relationship with God. I feel something shifting in this place. (laughs) What would happen in your life if you actually sat with Jesus? If you stopped scrolling on TikTok for about five minutes and, and you sat in your bed and you opened your Bible, imagine what can happen in your life. 
Imagine what would happen if, if you turned off Drake, if you, if you turned off Kanye West, if you, if you turned off Travis Scott and you turned on Maverick City and you heard the truth of God for yourself. What would happen if you decided to hear truth for yourself? The religion trap would be broken off of your life. You would be set free even though hard times will come, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will still be in your life. It, when, we are, when we hear the truth of God, when we're in relationship with God, anything is possible. I remember in my life, uh, I've been coming here for 13 years. It's amazing. I moved here from Las Vegas from, uh, or, I moved here from Las Vegas and uh, in seventh grade and, or actually I was in sixth grade and a friend invited me as I was going into seventh grade and it was awesome. I didn't, I didn't know how to read my Bible. I didn't know worship music. I didn't like Christian music. It's like, what is this? Like, <laughs> what are y'all doing? <laughs> Come on, turn on some, turn on some hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, this stuff is lame. Uh, Christian music is way better now <laughs> than it was 13 years ago. And I was like, dang, like, like I don't, I, I, I'm not about this right now. And uh, for years I was coming here, and I, I would come in, I would hear the message, I would be in worship. And as I was in this place, I learned how to be Christian on the outside. I learned how to, thank you, Simon. It's amazing. Appreciate you. <laughs> uh, I learned how to look Christian. I, I, I put on a mask. I put on a face. I knew whenever the song got loud at the right time, you know, I would lift up my hands. You know, my armpits would sink as a seventh grade kid. So I would be like, oh, <laughs> right here. You know, that, 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 that move. You're like, oh, yep, I'm going to stay right here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, I learned all the Christian ways. I, 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 I started to learn how to talk Christian. I'm blessed, brother. How are you doing, Ryan? I'm blessed, you know, just living life. And I, I, I learned how to act Christian. I, I learned really how to be religious. I learned how whenever I stepped here on a Wednesday night for an hour and a half, how to look like I was doing okay. But really, when I, when I went home, I was addicted to porn. Uh, I was a bully. I was, I was angry all the time. I, I didn't have a father figure in my life to show me how to respect people and, and do certain things. My, my dad, uh, he supported me and loved me from afar, but I didn't see it up close. And, and I was broken and I was hurting. And, and there was so much going on at home. But with my religion, I learned how to put on a face. And I believe that there's people in here where you've put on a face for so long. Like, like in this section, I, I, I sense like four rows back, like on that row, I, I sense that there has been, there's been someone who has learned to put on a face, who, who has put on a mask. I, I, I sense on this side over here that there, there's been many seasons throughout your life that, that you, you've tried it, and, but you've given up because it didn't feel right. It didn't look right. And so, so all of a sudden you decided to step away, but, but we learn how to be religious. We learn. Relationship is so much better than religion. Actually, having a relationship with God is way better than acting like we're Christian. Actually, living in intimacy with our Father is so much better than putting on a facade for people for an hour and a half on a Wednesday night. And when we learn to take off this mask, when we learn how to stop being so religious, we're gonna see God do something in our lives.